Hey everyone, today we are with this old Hyundai Getz, which look especially young compared to other Getz in my country, and it's time to replace the timing belt. The job is the same as most Hyundai and Kia from this era. Along the way, we'll also replace the drive belts, so let's get started. In the first step, we will lift the vehicle. As I like to say, you can use jack and jack stands, but excuse me for using the lift and taking care of my damaged back. Let's remove the wheel with a 19mm socket. Next, we'll remove the upper timing cover that is held with two bolts using a 10mm socket and also move aside the wiring that is attached to it. We don't have to do this step at the beginning and it can wait for the last steps of the disassembly as well. Next, let's remove the lower plastic cover that is attached with several bolts using a 10 millimeter socket as well. In the case of vehicle in Israel, chances are that this cover is long gone. But here we are talking about specially preserved gets over here. So we continue with the tradition by keeping this cover and put it aside until we finish with the job. Next, use a jack stand and a piece of wood under the engine to support it since we are going to remove the engine mount. We we'll remove the engine mount by removing its bolts and nuts using 17 and 14 millimeter sockets. We will also remove the support bridge so we can take it out completely. Before we remove the drive belts, we will take advantage of the resistance they make in by disassembling the water pump pulley bolts using a 10 mm ring wrench. The excess is not the most convenient, so be patient. You can play with the height of the engine using the jack carefully from down below to get a little more comfortable access. Now let's start loosening the drive belts. Let's start with the alternator. From the bottom, loosen the 12 mm nut that holds the alternator in place. Just make it loose, not disassemble it completely. You can identify the nut by the square head on the other end of the bolt. Using a 12 mm wrench, loosen the tension screw and then loosen the tensioner until the belt is loose. We can't remove it completely yet because it's on the inner pulley. So we will go ahead and remove the rest of the belt. Loosen the lower tensioner pulley of the compressor belt by first loosening the center nut using a 14 mm socket and then loosening the tension bolt using a 12 mm socket. Once again, until the belt is loose. We have one belt more to go, the one of the power steering pump. The axis is not the most convenient, so to make life easier, we will first remove the emergency switch of the fuel pump. Pay attention that if it's pressed by mistake, the car may not start after. This is what happened to us. In order to continue working in a more convenient way, I also removed the washer reservoir that is connected with several bolts with 10 mm heads and also moved the steering pump oil reservoir slightly to the side. Then I could remove the emergency switch completely. It is held with two bolts using an 8 mm socket. Okay. Now we have access to insert a 12 mm socket through the pulley of the pump and loosen the bolt that holds it. You don't have to unscrew it completely, but just enough to loosen the belt. And remove the belt. We will continue to disassemble the water pump completely by removing the four bolts that we loosened earlier. Note that the water pump contains two pulleys. Using 22 mm sockets on the crankshaft, we will turn the engine clockwise to the timing marks. Pay attention to the mark on the pulley that should be in front of the letter T. Make sure that the marking on the camshaft is also in place so that in front of the upper hole in the camshaft pulley there is the marking. It is a bit hard to see so you can use a small screwdriver that will go inside the hole and make sure that it touches the hole that is behind the pulley. In order to remove the crankshaft pulley we will use a heavy duty power tool. In our case the Milwaukee didn't help at first either. So we spray down some penetrating oil and let it sit for a few minutes and then it came out easily yeah. and wiggle it out away. We now have access to the lower timing cover which is held in place with a few bolts. We'll remove them with a 10 mm socket and a small wrench and move it out of the way. We will return the crankshaft pulley bolt back again so that we can rotate the engine to the timing marks. In this case when we don't have the pulley 
we can see that there is a marking with an arrow on one of the crankshaft teeth. The arrow should point at a mark on the block. Let's continue by loosening the tensioner bolts using a 12 millimeter socket. And push the tensioner to the side to loosen the belt and remove it. Now we will remove the tensioner and its spring completely. Pay attention that the spring is under pressure and be cautious while removing it. We will assemble the new tensioner in the reverse order. We will put it in full tension, meaning it should be all the way to the right. And with the help of pliers, we will lift the spring to its anchor point. Now we will bring the tensioner to the most loosened position and tighten back the bolts, but not all the way in. We will assemble a new timing belt. Pay attention to the direction of the belt. There aren't too many tricks here. You put on the new belt clockwise. We start from the crankshaft sprocket and take care to stretch the belt on its way to the camshaft. From there through the tensioner and let the tensioner take care of any slack. Make sure all the markings are in place all the way. In the next step, the tensioner will help us tense the belt, so make sure you don't tie the bolts all the way. We will manually turn the crankshaft to revolution, which will give us complete revolution of the camshaft. And make sure again the markings stay in place. Now we will tighten the two tensioner bolts to 25 Newton meter. Now the belt should be tensioned at such a level that when we push it on the longest flat part, it is pushed about half a centimeter in. Now all we have to do is to assemble everything back again in reverse order. We will return the lower timing cover with its bolts. We will put the crankshaft pulley back in its place. If we try to tighten it manually, we will have a problem since we have nothing that will stop the engine from turning. There are tools that lock the pulley, but we can settle for what it's called a motion, meaning Milwaukee. We will continue to work from above. Assemble the water pump pulley connected with four bolts, and we will start assembling new drive belts. Starting with the alternator belt. And tighten the tensioner in the reverse order to what we did before. And don't forget the anchor bolt that is down there, near the oil filter. We will continue to the steering pump belt. Stretch it by moving the pump and tighten the bolt. Last but not least, the AC belt. We will put it on the pulley. and tighten the tensioner until there is enough tension. Enough tension meaning we can rotate the belt about 90 degrees. And finally, we will tighten the central bolt of the tensioner. We will use again the resistance of the belt to tighten the water pump pulley bolts. And then we will reassemble the other accessories we removed. The emergency switch of the fuel pump, the reservoir of the steering oil, and the windshield washer reservoir along with its hoses and the pump as well. We will return the windshield fluid that we spilled. I'm not wasting any. We will return the engine mount together with its bracket and tighten the nuts almost all the way, making it pull the engine up and take the load off the jack stand that we placed under the engine at the beginning of the work. And finally, tighten the engine mount nuts. The central 17 mm nut with a torque of 19 Newton meters and the 14 mm nuts with a torque of 45 Newton meters. We will return the upper timing cover connected with two bolts and also the harness that is connected to it. Pay attention that I disconnected the temperature sensor connector, so I'm plugging it back as well. 
Just before we put the lower cover back on, while we are there, let's change the oil, the washer of the terrain plug, and the oil filter. Lubricate the seal of the new filter and fill the filter with some fresh oil and tie the filter only by hand. The time has come to reassemble the lower plastic cover because unlike anyone else, we want these gets to be preserved the way it left the factory. And finally, we will put the wheel back in place. Lower the vehicle to the floor, fill 3.3 liters of new oil, and while I'm doing so, the air filter is also replaced in the background. And there we are, the moment of truth. Will she start? Oh, as I said before, the emergency fuel switch was pressed, disabling the fuel pump. So we press it once again and... That's it, the job is done. If you enjoyed the video and it helped you, click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more DIY videos and consider recommending it to a friend. Bye!